it's Friday, the 11th, and we're doing another volume of Revolution Technique called Shells. When discs and washers fail, okay? Now, take a look at 88AB3. Let's try that one out for size. Okay, 88AB3. Now, I'm going to focus on the questions, uh, the parts of the questions that involve shells, except for this one. I'm going to do part A just as a warm-up, okay? Um, let R be the region in the first quadrant enclosed by the hyperbola x squared minus y squared equals 9. The x-axis on the line x equals 5. Find the volume of the solid generated, this is part A, by revolving that region R about the x-axis. Now, I think that's disks. Let's just review disks quick, and then we'll do shells. All right, so what does that look like? Let's graph it out. Now, this is 88 AB3. We didn't have no house. Do you know how to graph a hyperbola? Yeah, well... Not a parabola. Okay. And it's not a circle. It's x squared minus y squared equals, uh, what was it, 9? Um, well, this is the kind of hyperbola that has an x intercept, two x intercepts, or two y intercepts. Which one is it? X. How do you know? How do you know? X. How do you know? Yes. Wait, you're, you're cheating. Yes. Yeah. X. That was right. Yeah, she was right. Okay. How do you know? Well, to get an x intercept, you plug in y equals 0. If y equals 0, what's x? Three. Do it the other way. What if x is zero? What's y? Pretend this is not here. What's y? How do you solve negative negative y squared equals nine? Well, we it can't work. Y squared is negative nine, so y is plus or minus three i. We're not dealing with that stuff in our graphs. That's not an intercept, okay? So uh, three is an x intercept, and negative three is an x intercept. So if you graph it, here's the origin. It goes through three on the x-axis. And the hyperbola goes like this, right? But I'm dealing with a function, right? So what part of the hyperbola am I talking about? If, if I solve this for y... In the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, that's what they wanted, right? Zing. Okay? Because that's not a function if I graph the whole thing. So they're not really talking about the whole relation. They're just talking about the principal root when you solve for y. Let's solve for y. How do you get y alone? Subtract what? X squared? No, subtract y squared. Subtract y squared? Okay. Well, then you know what you're adding it. Okay, so you got x squared equals 9 plus y squared. Okay, then what? So x squared minus 9 is y squared. So what's y? The principal root of x squared minus 9 is what we graphed. Okay, that's what we graphed, this piece. It's plus or minus, right? But I'm doing plus. Now, think, be careful. There is another branch that I probably goes through negative 3 out here. But we're not dealing with that. They said just the first quadrant, right? So we want the area bounded by the hyperbola and the line x equals 5. What does that look like? Vertical well, line. So let's draw that. So let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's pretend it goes through 5. There it goes. Okay, good. Yeah, everybody's a critic. Okay, so that region, bounded by the x-axis, the line x equals 5 and that thing. Now, they didn't ask for the area, but they could have find the integral from 3 to 5 under this dx, right? But what they want is a volume of revolution about the x-axis. What do you want? Vertical or horizontal strips? Vertical. Vertical, well, actually vertical might be easier. It's not always easier. Sometimes it's easier to set up in horizontal. You'll see. All right, so what's the thickness of this strip? Dx. Dx, okay. What's the height? The function. So that's how you get the area, right? But how do you get the volume of revolution? You set up a disc or a washer? Disc, because it touches the axis of rotation, so there's no hole in the middle, right? Okay, so set up a disc. The volume of revolution, where am I going to fit this? The volume of revolution about the x-axis is going to be, how do you set it up? Right, pi. Pi, the integral from? 3 to 5. 3 to 5 of r squared dx. Well, who's r? Y. The y value. And remember, that's a radical, so when you square it, it's just x squared minus 9. Well, on this domain, it's positive, so it doesn't really matter. But that's really an absolute value. Don't forget, pi r squared what? dx. Okay, that's pre pretty easy to integrate, isn't it? Nothing special there. No radical, no squaring, no nothing. So what do you get? x cubed over 3 minus 9x evaluated according to the fundamental theorem from 3 to 5, and then multiplied by pi. Okay. So plug in 5, 
5 cubed is what, 125? Yep. And 5 times 9 is 45? Okay, minus plug in 3, well that's what? Plug in 3 here? 27 thirds minus 3 times 9 is also 27. And take that whole thing times pi. All right, this is this. This is not new. I'm going to do new stuff in part B. Okay, so how about we combine the fractions that already have common denominators? 125 thirds minus 27 thirds is how many thirds? 98, actually, right? And negative 45 minus a negative 27? How do you subtract a negative? So negative 45 plus 27? Uh, 18. Yeah, isn't it? 18 plus 27 is 45. And you need a common denominator of 3, so multiply top and bottom by 3, and you get 98 thirds minus how many? Fifty-four thirds, right? And don't forget times pi. So now the final answer is what? Forty-four thirds of pi cubic units. All right, that's just war warm up. That's review of what we did already. Now this is different. Question. Then you set up a big you, disc. Then you, have, then you subtract. Minus a little disc, yeah. But if it's the hole is another disc. If it's not a hole, then you just do then the this. Okay. That's it. Good. All right, part B. Now, set up but do not integrate an integral expression in terms of a single variable for the volume of the solid generated when R is revolved about the line X equals negative 1. All right, now, there's two new things going on here. X equals negative 1 is the axis of rotation, not one of the axes, X axis or Y axis. That's new. Also, if you're doing vertical strips, the strip is parallel to the axis of rotation. That's different also. You could, but you don't have to. Right, that's why I'm going to show you something new. Okay, this thing, this new thing is called shells. Okay? If you take a vertical strip, remember, it's infinitely thin, right? It's very, very, very thin. And you revolve it around that line, all the way around, all the way around, all the way around. You get a very thin, like, skin, right? What we call, like, a, like a pasta shell. But that, that's a little thick. Think of it like, you know, remember the Coke can, the cylinder? If you slice off the top and the bottom, what's left? The outside of the Coke can, that's what I, I'm talking about. The shell is a shape like that, the aluminum that's left on the outside of the Coke can. Right? If you get rid of the top and bottom, just the side of the Coke can, that's the shell. It's infinitesimally thin, okay? But it has some volume. If I could figure out its volume, and then another one based on a strip over here, and its volume, another one with a strip out here, and its volume, and its volume, eventually you're going to add up to all the volume. Okay? So, what do you do? Well, think of one shell. What's the volume of the one shell? Well, again, if you take the sides of the Coke can and you unravel it, what do you get? You get a rectangle whose base is 2 pi r. Right? You have a radius of a revolution, but you also have a circumference of revolution. Isn't that the base of the rectangle if you roll, unroll it? And what's the height of the rectangle? The function itself, 2 pi r function times the thickness. 2 pi r, the base, the function is the height, and then you need the thickness to get the third dimension in there. So d dx, so we're, we're, estimating, we're estimating this volume of the whole mess by estimating the volume of a cylindrical shell, by estimating the volume of a rectangular prism. It's really a, a rectangle. 2 pi r is the base, the function is the height, and then a little thickness. It's really like a very thin box, right? So how do you set all that mess up? And they said, just set it up. Don't actually do it. All right, you know what? I'm going to go to the next page, I think. Well, may maybe I have room. Right. Okay, so the volume of, of, of revolution about x equals negative 1, not the x-axis, right, is 2 pi times the radius of rotation, which could be a function in x, times the height function, times dx. And these better be functions in x if we got dx. These better be functions in y if you got dy. Because right, you could get a shell with horizontal strips going around the x-axis or some other horizontal line. Well, the radius is what? Hmm. How far is the strip? That's the radius from here to here, right? How far is that strip from negative 1? 4, 4. Uh, not always. It could be 4. 
3 is 4 units from negative 1. 5 is 6 units from negative 1. We're going to do an integral, but right now, right now I'm doing a Riemann statement. I just want the volume of one shell, not the whole thing. Okay? So, wherever this is, it's some x value between 3 and 5. Isn't it x minus negative 1 is the distance? Or it's, in other words, x plus 1, right? So if you're at 3, it's 4 away. If you're at 5, it's 6 away. If you're at, four, at uh, what, 4, you're 5 away. If you're somewhere in between, it's uh, 4 point something away. All right, so the, func the radius itself is a function in x. It's x plus 1. Where did I put my thing? Yeah. All right, yeah, what? Oh, what are we up to? It is 10. Okay, see you, YouTube. Nice to know you.